Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Historiographers. We've got the next podcast up here, and I'm with photographer and reenactor Lisa. Hello. Hello, Tom. Thank you for having me. No worries at all. Thank, thank you for being about, really. No problem. <laughs> So how are you finding all the lockdown then at the moment? Uh, actually, it's quite good fun. Um, I probably shouldn't say it's fun, but um, I've been practicing my Tudor dancing in the, in the back garden on my own, which is causing my husband quite a lot of amusement. Is he, he not joining in then, no? <laughs> no, he's threatened to video it a few times, but he hasn't quite got around to it. So. Fair enough. Because <laughs> you, um, you also do sort of a bit of writing and reenacting as well and photography. How did I you did. sort of get into all of that out of interest? Uh, the photography I have, I have loved photography since I was a small child. My my parents are both very keen photographers and my dad set up a dark room in the downstairs bathroom at home. So we were doing black and white um, printing and developing and, and it, it just followed from there. And I've always enjoyed history. My mum is a big history fan. And with the advent of Facebook, um, things just pop up on your on your feed and a few reenact reenac- reenactors turned up and I went along to a few events and just realized that this whole community was out there getting dressed up on the weekend and it, loving their history and I thought wow this is fabulous how can I get involved in this this is this is brilliant and being able to take photographs of them is just dream come true it's fabulous because you do get a load of real characters there, don't you? I've seen oh, you do. Events, yeah. Oh, you do. You do. You get completely across the board, and it's wonderful when when people are able to to keep to character, especially. Not everybody does, and that's absolutely fine. But some of the characters, when they are in character, it's just incredible. It it just having somebody in front of you just brings the whole thing to life so much more than reading it from a book it's it's just fabulous it's good good point you mentioned books actually because uh i take it you're you're quite an avid reader yourself oh yes i have got history books in every shape and form in piles all over the house we're getting ready to do a house move at the moment and and there are boxes and boxes of books and and i can't believe how many books we've got i have to admit i got told by my wife for having (laughs) <laughs> too many books and we moved as well so I can completely uh, sympathize <laughs> we'll get around to reading them at some point I'm sure absolutely so so when you were a sort of a child then did you have any favorite books yourself anything that really sort of got you into reading and into history and things like that my absolute favorite book when I was a child was To Kill a Mockingbird and it still is my my favorite book I love that book and I could read it over and over and over again and and of course it's historical because it's set in um America in the 50s is it it's been a while since I've read it um but I I love that book but I just love reading as well um and we always had books around the house when I was a kid say my mum was was still is very into history so there were lots of history books and am I right thinking as well that from obviously that reading then you've gone on to do a bit of writing too a little bit yeah I'm I'm trying to um organize a book it's mostly photography there will be some writing in there which is going to test my writing skills um but the idea of it is to be uh, a coffee coffee table book full of absolutely fabulous photographs of reenactors because um i just i just feel that they don't get the credit that they deserve with putting together their costumes and their equipment and their kit and there are lots of books out there with with pictures of reenactors in there but not actually about them no and and the stories behind why somebody picks a particular time period that they want to dress up in and why they want to be a peasant as opposed to a member of the aristocracy or royalty or they want to be a viking instead of a tudor there's lots of 
stories behind all that and I just I just want to meet these people and capture this this uh, element just put it all together in a fabulous book because there's a lot of scope there really isn't it because mm. it definitely is filling a gap in the market I've never actually seen anything like that yeah I haven't no not at all so uh, I would l- love to be able to put that together it's it's quite a logistical nightmare at the moment is trying to get the right people in the right place at the right time um it's it's difficult to do that sort of thing when you're actually at an event because you don't want to Mm. disturb them because they're doing their doing their thing um and then trying to find a a convenient time out of season if you like an appropriate historical location um it's quite difficult so um it's taking a little bit longer than i was hoping it would but I'm I'm gonna get there. I, I just I just want to see this book because there is nothing else out there like it. And on the plus so, side, of course, you don't have to source your own images from somebody else, exactly, do you? Exactly, I can take exactly myself. my own images. <laughs> but I want, you've, I been a, do... you've done a bit of reenacting yourself, haven't you? If if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I have. I've done a lot of Tudor. I have been various members of the Tudor royal court. Uh, and the odd peasant. <laughs> yeah. Any <laughs> highlights? Oh golly. Um, yes, I think a big highlight was um, dressing as or being Anne Boleyn at Hampton Court Palace uh, for an event with John Lodge, who, if you don't know, if you're not musically inclined, um, is the bass guitarist with the Moody Blues. Oh, wow. But, but he also has a vineyard. I um, can't remember where it is, but he produces wine. So he was having a launch event for his new year of wine a few years ago. And when it came up, I got in touch with um, his team and said, look, you're having this launch event at Hampton Court Palace. It's, what, it's my absolute favourite place. And I and I do reenactment. Can I come as Anne Boleyn? And they said, Yeah, that'd be great. So I I turned up at Hampton Court Palace in full full regalia. Wow. And I and I was there and we did. John was fabulous. He's he's such a nice guy for a rock star. He is he's such a lovely guy. And he did a FaceTime with me on my on my Facebook page and and it was just brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. I was I was in cloud nine. Wow. <laughs> it was amazing so have you had the chance to work then with any other sort of celebrities in that sense as well um i i have i've met alison weir and i have met Susanna lipscomb and dan jones but i haven't met lucy worsley yet and i would love to to work with her because she's on the to-do list of... she is on the to-do list because she if you if you see her program, she get she will get dressed up in characters. Yeah. She doesn't care. <laughs> That's the way she comes across because she's been dressed up as Henry VIII and all sorts. So, I, I I think she would just be so so much fun to work with. I would love to to have a chance to work with her. Well, who who knows? I mean. Well, you never know. <laughs> might bump past one day. You never know. <laughs> Maybe she'll do do the introduction for my book because it's all reenactors. You never know. Oh, absolutely. That would be good. Is it quite is it quite difficult out of interest sourcing bits like dresses and things like that for obviously because obviously it's all off your own back, isn't it? You're constrained by the 20th century yeah. because we don't necessarily have the same resources that they had. So part of the time you can't source the exact same fabric, but you can find something that's very similar. Yeah. Or just from the practicality of trying to put these outfits on, um, you have to, to tweak it slightly. So you're as authentic as the 21st century will let you be. The curtains are great. Have... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> curtains make very good dresses. Which is, I can imagine. Which is, uh, yeah, very odd. But um, I'm I'm not so good with a, a needle and thread. Um, I'm, I'm more of a a crocheter which is a shame because they didn't have crochet in the Tudor period even so it's a skill though it's, it's a, a skill. skill um but I I have got friends who who are very skilled in sewing so they make their own costumes I have to rely heavily on other people yeah. making for me or helping me 
well, make suppose, adjustments in a, and stuff. So. In a way, it's that networking, isn't it? That's where exactly. All... Yeah. So how would yeah. you describe the sort of work you do then? Do you have any advice for anyone else who wants to get started sort of in the heritage sector, whether or not it's in yeah. writing, reenacting, photography? My reenactment photography is passionate because I'm passionate about the subject. So I like to think that my photographs reflect that. I love detail and some of the detail on these costumes that people make for themselves is just incredible. So being able to capture that in a photograph just is just amazing if you're wanting to to break into this industry pick your time period pick your historical era do some research so you you know what you're talking about if you end up with a group you probably end up with a character as well so be that character do as much research as possible whether it's a real person or you're basing it on on somebody but it's not a real historical person do your research don't just join a group and expect them to tell you everything you need to know do a bit of legwork yourself there's so much information out there and just throw yourself into it and have fun with it because that's having fun is the big element of this if it's not fun it's then it's not worth doing you have well, to be having fun you always seem to be having fun in your photos oh, I've seen of you anyway. always yeah, seem smart yeah. there <laughs> yep yeah, doesn't matter how tightly corseted and pulled in I am. It's just, I absolutely love it. So would you say then 16th century is your favourite time period or do you have any others? The Tudor period is where it started. So that definitely has a special place. As I go around to events, I've been to a few multi-era events as well. You start learning about different periods and I'd love to, I'd love to be a Victorian at the moment. That's my my next one, I think. But it's finding the costumes and the time and, and what have you but. Tudor is definitely the love of my life, I guess. So among those sort of periods, and I'm, I'm guessing, did you, you mentioned earlier that Hampton Court is a favourite sort of location. Would you say that's your absolute favourite in the UK? Or are oh, there any others? I, I love Hampton Court. I think it's just amazing. And having had the, the privilege of being at one of their overnight events, and being dressed as a Tudor, walking around a very empty, very dark, quiet Hampton Court at night was just incredible. It's still lit up in some shape or form, but you are walking through the courtyards and you can imagine that you are walking in the footsteps of the people that you are portraying. You know, Anne Boleyn walked through the, that courtyard and all, pretty much all the queens did and Henry did and... and and then being there first thing in the morning, the next morning, before the public come in, it's so quiet, so peaceful. And the fact that you, know, you can walk through the Tudor Hall and a few rooms around the corner, you're in a Georgian period. It's yeah. just bonkers. You, know, it, <laughs> you look at one side of the, the building and it's completely different to the other side. I just love Hampton Court. I don't get to go very often, but I do love it. And I love Sudley Castle as well that's just got a very special feel to it and that's so that's where Catherine Parr is buried and that's that's a lovely quiet peaceful spot to see her tomb in the in the church so yeah so if you could spend a day with anyone from history then who would it be and why that is such a difficult question that is we always get that (laughs) oh my goodness there are so many people but I I think probably Catherine Parr because I I do p- portray her as a queen and I think she's very yeah, underappreciated. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like oh well, she was the one that survived. She was she was his, Henry's nursemaid at the end, but she was an incredibly intelligent woman. Mm-hmm. She wrote books. She managed to avoid having a her head chopped off, unlike several other wives because she was able to speak to Henry on the same level you know she was she was married four times we we make a big thing about Henry being married six times but she was married four times and the first three marriages were arranged so she didn't actually get to marry for love until the the fourth one and even then that didn't end well either because she died in childbirth and and she married Thomas Seymour who was a bit of a, a rogue anyway I just think she had such an interesting life 
I would, I would, yeah, I would love to, to spend the day with her and just see what she made of everything. And she'd be a good one. So do you have sort of any groups and organisations then that you personally would recommend to anyone who has an interest in living history like you do? Not as such. I, I would suggest going to as many events as possible. And if you can find a multi-era event, that's a good place to start. At Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, you can type in reenactment and there are hundreds of groups online that you could speak to. Um, and then you've obviously got the individual groups that cover different time periods and and what have you. So, Funnily yeah. enough, actually, I didn't realise I was looking recently at ones near where I'm based. And uh, I didn't realise there's a Viking reenactment group <laughs> in Manchester. And you wouldn't often link the two, would you? But, no, no. You know, yeah. <laughs> So obviously the lockdowns had a bit of a it's a bit, bit of a negative effect for most people, but yeah. I suppose on the plus side, of course, it means anyone who is at home can work on their own personal projects, their hobbies. Obviously, mm-hmm. work from home if they're fortunate enough to do so. Yeah. Once things are sort of on the way back to normal, do you have any projects or events on the horizon that you'd like to you'd like to do, and if so, how the public can get involved? Obviously, I'm, I've got the, the books, so I'm I'm keen to meet up with as many reenactors as possible who would be happy to have their photographs taken and tell me their stories. I'm sort of in between groups at the moment, so when I when I move next month, where we're moving to in Wales, um, I have some friends there, and we're in the process of setting up our own group there. And we're very fortunate because Wales is just full of castles and medieval castles, Tudor castles, and so on and so forth so that'll be fun trying to put that all together working out who our characters are working out what we're going to do um one of the ladies who's who's a member is also an author so she writes a lot of Tudor historical novels which is where she started getting dressed up so we're we're sort of supporting her as well but just expanding that group so that's what I'm working on at the moment that's the main thing Oh, lovely stuff. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing obviously some of your projects come to life soon. The, the book in particular <laughs> sounds really good. Thank you. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your time. And, You're uh, very welcome. You very best. Thank you.